When great RPGs are talked about, you hear the usual. Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy IX, Earthbound, and occasionally I get a Super Mario RPG. I was hoping Super Mario RPG would have shown up as a part of the Nintendo Switch Online package, but instead, in June 2023, it was announced as a remake. People familiar with the RPG cheered, and people who hadn't played were excited to finally experience this classic. Myself included, I wanted to see why so many people loved this game. And yeah, my eyes have been opened. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Atlas. Yes, Atlas has been knocking it out of the park lately, and today they wanted me to talk to you about their twist on a tactical fantasy RPG. Unicorn Overlord, Atlas, and Vanillaware teamed up to give us this gorgeous strategy RPG. It has everything you want in a strategy game, beginning with the tale as old as time of a prince seeking to overthrow the empire as he has the ring of the unicorn. Exploration, allowing you to explore any area in whatever order. Liberating towns that are worse for the wear, leading to town building mechanics, which I am a sucker for. Very Various types of quests earning you new recruits, training your recruits for promotions to reach new heights, building rapport between characters to unlock special scenes and receive stat bonuses, and the music. That's actually what captured my attention first. There's so much greatness here and you too can experience it. Download and play the demo right now on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, 5, and Xbox Series XS. And remember, the demo carries over to the main game, which comes out March 8th, 2024 on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4 and 5, and Xbox Series X and S. Thank you again, Atlas, for sponsoring today's video. And remember to help assist the out by clicking the link in the pinned comment or in the description for more details. So immediately what stands out to me is the title screen. No sound, just Bowser's castle, blanketed in a starry night sky. All right, well, you're given the option to play it on breezy or normal. Trust me, play it on normal. The difficulty is borderline non-existent. As we all know, Mario is known for its riveting storytelling, in-depth characters, and unseen plot twists. This first one, you will never see coming. Peach gets kidnapped by Bowser. Shocking, I know. Mario dutifully plays the part of the hero and rushes to save her by going to Bowser's castle. Which, by the way, they're neighbors? To add more insult to injury, the only place separating Bowser's castle from the Mushroom Kingdom is Mario's shack? You'd think you, like, move or something? Anyways, after a grand chase and an epic battle atop chandeliers, eh. Mario defeats Bowser. The princess is right within grasp when the castle rumbles. A giant sword pierces the heavens, splitting a rainbow star into seven, and roots itself in Bowser's castle. A flash of white light reveals the true title screen. Bowser's castle, with a sentient sword at its center, the sky blurred red with stars falling. I did say Mario is known for their unseen plot twists. Mario is flung from the castle and back home, and tasked with finding Princess Peach. But that's not the main objective, as if you watch the demo played out, the thing that happens when you don't press a button on the title screen, you'll see that she's one of your party members. And what a delightful cast we have. A mix of familiar and brand new faces. First, we have our leading man, who needs no introduction, Mario. While a silent protagonist, he compensates for personality with charming pantomiming. Also, I would like to appreciate how valued jumping is in this world. It's just a super special talent, and the amount of ways it's creatively used to impress people or avoid troublesome situations is just great. Peach, Mushroom Kingdom's kind princess, and can I just say I love that she joins in on the adventure, rather than being the end goal. Bowser, Mario's iconic rival, his cause for joining is the sentient sword is grounded in his castle, and he wants it out. What better way to use Mario and company to help him get it out? Of course, Bowser has pride, darn it, and frames the story as Mario and friends are his minions. <laughs> because obviously he'd never be submissive to Mario no matter how many of you degenerates want it. Oh snap, wait a minute. And now we go to the newer cast, and surprisingly, my favorite, I think? I present to you Mallow, the frog. An adorable young frog who is trying to find his place in the world. And the fan favorite, who I was very excited to meet because nobody would shut the heck up about him, Gino. And make no mistake, before y'all come for me, I love Gino. Just Mallow was the star of my favorite scene in the game. Anyways, Gino is a possessed doll who insists on repairing Star Road. Which brings us to the true task at hand, collecting all seven stars to bring back wishes. Hence the original title, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. For better or worse, the gameplay is pretty simple as the story. If you're a turn-based, time-button-press kind of person, look no further than Super Mario RPG. 
it's very straightforward. You have four options, item, use an item, other, defend, or run away. To attack, do a standard attack. Time correctly, you'll do extra damage and hit all enemies. Throughout the adventure, you'll gain new weapons that have different timed attacks. And I don't know about you, but every time I found a new weapon, I just mastered the timing on my current one. The trade-off being keep the weapon you know you could perfect time, but has a lower damage stat, or take the new weapon but risk not landing those perfects. Thankfully, you're shown an exclamation mark to show when you're supposed to press it to land a perfect upon using a new move. After a few uses, it goes away, but if you start slipping up, the exclamation point will reappear. I found this incredibly helpful, and it did help me recognize the offbeat timing. This also activates with dodges and special moves. Specials are special attacks that consume FP, aka flower points. Note, FP is shared between party members. Special attacks have an extra mechanic to do more damage, or be more potent. For example, jumping with Mario requires perfect timing. Mallow's snowy attack requires you to rapidly rotate the joystick, or Gino's beam requires you to release the button when the gauge fills. All of these are means of keeping the player engaged. Though I will say the time button presses felt off. Maybe because I recently played Sea of Stars, which threw off my timing. On the flip side, enemies attack you and you have an opportunity to perfect block. You can block and take reduced damage or manage to perfect block shown by the shield and take no damage. And again, the timing is so short that oftentimes I don't even make a standard block. Now, to be fair, this game is so incredibly easy, so I suppose making it easy to block, resulting in zero damage, would zap away any last bit of difficulty this game has to offer. And Mario RPG does shake things up a bit with enemies having different timed attacks or AoE attacks that cannot be blocked. Aside from doing extra damage, hitting all enemies, and taking zero damage, having a chain of perfect actions grant you buffs, depending on who you have in your party. Mallow increases magic attack, Geno increases attack and speed, etc. And each time you nail an action command, the action gauge fills up. When it reaches 100%, you could perform a triple attack, which changes based on who you have in your party. Some moves are single target, others multiple. Some block damage or fully heal. And you get a cool, skippable CGI cutscene with it. Event, you have party members whose triple attacks you don't want to use, you could switch out party members while in battle. And the game is thoughtful enough to show you the new triple attack based on who you switch with. You can even switch out the dead, an absolute game changer. And this brings me to new additions, switching party members mid battle being one of them. The entire gauge system, new. Triple attacks, buffs from perfect chains, all new. Being able to hit enemies with perfect attacks, new. The exclamation mark, new. Courtesy of telling you when attacks aren't blockable, new. Auto saves, new. A storage box for when you're holding too many items, new. Leveling up is the same, but looks new and a thousand times better because the whole squad is dancing. I actually love when multiple characters level up. Each character gets their moment. The spotlight is on them. You choose bonus stats, attack, magic, or HP while the others dance. Then the spotlight goes to the next person and the dance resumes. Say what you will, but this is how I want my milestones to be celebrated. And the post game? brand new, which is fighting a handful of bosses with raised difficulty. Rarely do I dabble in post-game shenanigans when it's solely related to gameplay, but I figured I'd give one or two bosses a go, and I end up doing them all. They were so incredibly fun, and if you're looking for a challenge, this is where you'll find it. In fact, I sort of wish some of the original bosses had this kind of challenge to them. I strongly recommend doing the post-game if you're wanting more of a fight. Outside of combat, Super Mario RPG is pretty straightforward, with minimal side quests and backtracking. There's little exploration to be had, the main one being find these damn invisible chests. I swear, my playtime is inflated solely because I was trying to find out where the hell these were hiding. There are some optional areas and few reasons to revisit previous areas. I wouldn't say this game is particularly quest-heavy. Thankfully, fast travel is accessible right from the get-go, should you be in need of a little backtracking. Heck, you can even fast travel from dungeons. There's also a handful of minigames, none that I could say I was too crazy about personally, but they did serve their purpose of breaking up the monotony of just going from town to town, dungeon to dungeon, and giving players the chance to earn a little more coin. Super Mario RPG has been graphically overhauled, 
brought to the modern era, and what a beautiful, vibrant, loud world. The land of Super Mario RPG is so easy to get lost in, not only because of its energetic color palette, but how it takes familiar layouts and enemies and combs it out into an RPG setting. Toads are the residents of several towns, chimneys are warp pipes, layouts require a lot of platforming, even the overworld map honors the traditional mapping of Mario. I am both charmed and impressed at how smooth the transition was from platformer to RPG. Each town feels incredibly different from the last, each with different problems and people. Dungeons were simplistic but fun, and never overstayed, unless it was the pipe vault. I'm ashamed to say I got lost and stayed way longer than I needed. In addition to a beautiful upgrade, they added a lot of new cutscenes for narrative purposes, and mentioned before, the team attacks. I love Mallow, and the scene where he's shaping up to be an absolute baddie is hilarious. And the six team attacks. Though I have to say this brings me to my second criticism of the game, not a deal breaker, but the lack of voices. I don't even need voice acting, but the lack of exclamations, crying, grunting, laughter, quips, the air felt so dead within cutscenes, and battling was only filled in by the sound effects of battle. I didn't need Xenoblade 2 levels of enemy lines, but a little would have gone a long way for me. Still, it's the narrative cutscenes that were especially egregious. And even though the lack of voice acting was a disappointment, the music surely was not. Can we please talk about Yoko Shimomura, the composer of Super Mario RPG, Kingdom Hearts, Parasite Eve, Legend of Mana, and many, many more, and how goddamn versatile she is. This woman cannot be stopped. Not in 1996, not in 2023, and surely not in 2024. The Super Mario RPG remake has an incredibly whimsical, happy-go-lucky soundtrack. It's always feel-good and exciting. The music does a great job tonally keeping it bouncy and playful, some even carrying the iconic Mario melody. Check out these tunes. not to listen to any of a game's OST before playing the game, as I want to hear what the music is associated with. Be in the location, be in the fight, be in the moment. And I think just hearing the music on its own can sometimes depreciate the impact. But I broke my own rule, and I listened to the battle music of the original and was like, ooh, this sounds like a party. It seems hype and fun while still fitting perfectly as a battle theme. So the theme I was looking forward to the most, and is undoubtedly my favorite track in the game, is the regular boss theme. It's a shame battles move swiftly and you don't get to bask in it for long. But you know what's even cooler? Is if you can maintain a five and above chain, the music slightly changes, like it's gassing you up. You got this, you're going hard in the paint. You block, you attack, the music's got your back. It's awesome and here's the dub over. that might be a tinge better than the battle theme are the weapon battle themes. And in case you're wondering, Boyer was my favorite. He's the loopy-eyed bow and he uses his own body to shoot arrows. I don't know why, but he just gave me a good laugh. Even his arrow minions were fun to look at.
Mario RPG is so overwhelmingly charming, I don't believe it's possible to dislike it. It's so vibrant, feel good, a flawless merge of platformer to RPG. It's a beautiful world littered with Mario sets. Yes, it's on the easy side, but the lack of difficulty didn't make it any less enjoyable. I do think a hard mode should have been available at the start for those who needed a challenge, but overall, Super Mario RPG is fantastic. Sure, it gives off baby first RPG, but it's enjoyable for everyone. Plus, it's short, 10 out of 10 soundtrack, and you don't need to play the original to appreciate this one. Thank you all so much for watching. More videos like this, click these boxes. Be sure to check out my Patreon, cause YouTube ain't paying like they used to. I hope you continue to stick around, hit subscribe, the notification bell, we got a lot more reviews coming, and even a list video in the works. Once again, I appreciate ya, and I'll see ya in the next video. Mwah.